My name is James Hayes. I'm from the mountains of North Carolina. I used to live in Wilmington, North Carolina, and that's where uh, we discovered that I had full-blown AIDS in 1995. And uh, how long do you think, how old are you? I'm 49. How long, in 95, when you found out you had full-blown AIDS, how long do you think you've been a, you had been HIV positive? Well, according to the GINA-TIP study, which is a study that can tell you what genetic uh, strain of AIDS you have, it can also tell you how long you've had it to within a few months, and they say 1982. Do you know, uh, do you have, do you have a, a, an idea how you got it? Uh, yeah, I got it from uh, a very, very close friend. A, uh, a, a messed up uh, CD4 count in my red blood cells were not uh, where and what they should be. And I was running a, a real low white blood cell count. Do you know what triggered the full-blown AIDS all of a sudden? Uh, I would have to say it was probably the way I was working and the shifts that I was working and the stress that that put on me, being a uh, supervisor for the entire house at uh, in Hanover Regional. I was working 12-hour shifts. What were you doing? I was a respiratory therapist supervisor. And you worked a lot? And I just sort of put myself into work and just work, 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 work. How did the full-blown AIDS happen? How, how did you come down with it? Or um, what happened there? I just, I found myself being very tired and uh, sometimes I couldn't make it through my 12-hour shift. At the time, I was suffering from uh, very, very chronic and severe diarrhea, and I couldn't go very far from where there was a restroom. Um, I got sick in the grocery store one day, and I had a buggy full of groceries, and I messed myself. I had to leave. I mean, and it hits you just, just mm -hmm. like that. What happened after you got the diagnosis? I became very depressed and uh, didn't want anybody around. I didn't tell my parents or anybody for many, many months. And at first I refused to take medication. I felt like being in the healthcare profession, I knew what AZT did to your kidneys and to your liver, and I really didn't want to uh, go on any of it. And about that time, the protease inhibitors came out, and my doctor talked me into uh, starting on the protease inhibitors. How much medication are you on now? I take. Uh, four HIV pills in the morning and four HIV pills in the evening. But there's a myriad of pills that you have to take to mask the symptom or the, the side effects of the medication, like the peripheral neuropathy. Uh, I have to take neurotin for that and, and a fairly high dose and um, there's a lot of emotional and depressive issues that go along with that, and you have to take uh, some things like Cymbalta and Clonopin or Ativan to uh, really cope and deal with your day. And there are days that you wake up and you just don't even feel like you can get out of the bed. He says just roll over, Anybody calls you, tell them you're having an AIDS day, and you're not doing anything. What are the good days? The good days are 
fairly quality life. They really are. I mean, I can drive my car. I can go places. Um, appetite is always an issue because the drugs make you nauseated, and uh, a lot of times you get diarrhea, and sometimes you just don't feel like eating because you know you're going to get nauseated from the food, or you're going to get diarrhea from the food. So you just don't eat, or you force yourself to eat and deal with the nausea with the medication. Now, the drugs that we have today are miraculous because you don't have the nerve damage that you got from the earlier drugs that causes the peripheral neuropathy. Um, most of the drugs today don't give you a lot of nausea, although it's still present. And um, you always have in the back of your mind, what's in store for me today? How do you get to the point where you can now talk about it? What happens? You reach a point that it's such a serious thing if you can't have some emotional release like maybe making fun of it or telling jokes about it or making fun of yourself about situations you literally will go crazy if you don't ever reach that point.